Welcome to May 2020, our virtual Floriani Club to all the high fashion Floriani owners. Uh, today we're going to do this virtually. I'm going to uh, show you how to check for updates and show the new update videos that Trevor Conkergood has up on the site. And then we're going to uh, play with some of the new features and make a uh, fancy fill mask. So this won't take too long. Try to keep it under 30 minutes. And our first step today is when you log on to your software, your software club pops up. So let's go ahead and sign into that. I'm gonna show you um, where the new updates and everything are at and how to look at the um, update videos done by Trevor Conkergood. So here's your usual, after you sign in, you've got a little tributes and stuff. So to go into your updates, there's actually a tab across this gray line here, and we wanna click on updates. And then there's the first tab down there is Floriani Embroidery Software, and it has FTCU slash Fusion. If you're not aware of what Fusion is, Fusion is a watered down version of FTCU for those that don't want to spend the full money and not need all the uh, features. So uh, they update them in the same place. So now when you click to that particular menu, you can scroll down. First off, you can download the latest version or you can preview the PDF, the paperwork of that version. So if you do not have build number 3670 that's 3670 then you need to download the latest version and follow the instructions on the screen there's even a video on how to download so you can see the update videos and such here so right here it's chronological order so here are the new tools and my first video i tried going through these tools and i'm going to let you do this at home and trevor does such a better job i was stumbling through it so I want you to go through these tools. You have a smart fill tool. You have a variable bean build on the 3670 tool. You have a bean fill tool. And you have new knife tools. There are several versions of this knife. So there's also, um, for the fusion owners, there's a new item. So I don't think I have any fusion owners. And all the rest of the videos are for previous builds. So let me review that again. To get to the Trevor Conquer Good videos, you go to updates, click on this very first Floriani and Birdie update, and it will bring you to the update button if you need to update, and it will bring you to all the tools. And look at these videos, they're not that long. So I would, um, they didn't say the number of minutes. They're only five minutes or so long. Some are only three minutes. So it's definitely worth your time. And even if you're new or haven't been on FTCU for a while, these will uh, help you see where all the new tools are at. And I highly recommend always staying current with the new build. So with that being said, let's go to the software and use one of the variable bean fills to uh, make a quick little fancy fill mask that you can stitch out and then pleat and put uh, ear loops on it. So I'm going to minimize out of here. We have our FTCU already filled on. We have a uh, blank workspace. So first off, let's go up to our shapes. I'm gonna gri grab a uh, rectangle and I'm just gonna make any size. I don't care right now. because I'm gonna transform this to nine inches by seven and a half inches. Now my cursor has a little rectangle tool still attached to it. So I have to come over here and touch this red arrow, which is my select tool, to allow it to be active. So I'm, this first one doesn't have anything to do with, it just says artwork. So the next one with the little arrows pointing all direction is transform. So I'm gonna left click on transform and I'm going to convert, to make sure it's in inches and make sure that the maintain aspect ratio is deselected because we want to make this exactly the size we want. So my width is going to be nine inches. So I'm gonna type in nine. My height is 7.5. And then 
you have to hit apply and sometimes this apply is hiding underneath your sequence view so you have to drag this sequence view down to find this apply button so let's hit apply now I can't see my rectangle very good so I'm going to go over here there's two ways to make it fit in your workspace my favorite is double left clicking on the magnifying glass so double left click on it and it will resize it to your workspace so if you look real close I have this in millimeters now, if you don't want to work in millimeters, there's an easy way to convert this to inches. So I'm going to put my cursor on this ruler up here and right click and then left click on inches. And now I'm in inches across here. So I can see in this gray, I'm nine inches there and seven and a half there. It's exactly the size I want to be. So an easy way to do a mask now is to auto applique this. And that will give me a placement stitch, a stitch down, tack down stitch and then a border on it. So let's go ahead and come down to this green sort of bush looking tool. And if you hover over, it says applique. So I'm gonna left click on applique and that automatically fills it in. So it's already an applique and it, it reverts to a standard satin applique around the edge. Well, I don't want satin. So the first thing I'm gonna change is I'm gonna click down on satin and I'm gonna find a motif that I want around my mask as a border. And if you find something that has kind of a straight edge, it's going to work a little better if you trim your, your fabric or your um, stabilizer. So I'm going to pick, just for Grimm's, 211. And I don't want the 4 millimeter size. So 7 millimeters is close to a quarter inch. So I'm going to use 7 millimeters. And my inset, I don't want it halfway across. So I want an inset of a hundred percent because I want it right on the edge let me just do it with the numbers I want the inside edge of nine inches and I do want to keep my placement stitch my tack down stitch and my finish stitch and I'm going to pick a fabric on the inside of this so if I hit this little three dots next to fabric you can come and select a fill fabric and I was showing at the last class how you can import a fabric chip and add it to your uh, fabrics library just by clicking on this add. So if you go to a website or if you scan a piece of fabric and put it in a folder where you know it's at, I always use a folder on my desktop, you can select this JPEG and add it to your fabric chips. So I'm going to use that and all you have to do is hit this add button. So I'm going to use this and OK, and that'll put a fabric background in my mask. So that's what that fabric would look like if I use that mask. And if you see, my border is all within, because I used 100% inset, all within that line of fabric. So it's always, it's exactly 9 by 7.5 inches still. If I use the 50-50, half of that border would be sticking out of that 9 inches and 7.5 inches, and it'd be bigger than I expected. So we have our fabric fill, we have uh, our border, tack downs. Now I'm gonna add a, another rectangle in here because if I switch this to a fill, it's gonna take away my applique. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add a rectangle just the inside of my border. So let's go to my shapes. I'm gonna click rectangle and I'm gonna start right here in the upper left corner. I'm gonna left click and I'm gonna drag this rectangle exactly the size here you could experiment and do it with transform option but if you drag from the very top left corner to the bottom right corner and drop it'll be the size rectangle you want now my cursor still has a rectangle tool attached so I'm going to come over here and hit my red arrow which is my select tool and now that rectangle I just built it active and I'm going to fill it the new variable bean fill or the very or the bean fill works on two tools. It will not work on a regular fill because it, the lines are too close. It will work. It will not work on a fancy fill, but it does work on a motif fill or a mesh fill. So today I'm gonna to be a little fancier and do a motif fill. So I'm gonna left click on motif. Let's go over here and pick one. I use 242 and if I do a pattern size of about 20 millimeters, 
and I like a stitch length of 3.5 on these uh, beans and I'm going to select my motif first and then I'm going to go back to making it a bean fill. So I'm going to hit apply. Really can't see it so well on there. Maybe if I change the color of it to a light blue. Didn't do much. So now I'm going to go to bean type, my fill. So I'm going to go to a bean. This is the new option. And I'm going to do a nine layer or nine option on the bean. And I'm not going to randomize it all. So I'm going to hit apply. And you know what? I'm going to go into, there we go. So if you look at this, you can see the lines in there. And I'm going to enlarge a little corner of it. So see, here is my pattern that is going to be allowed, be done as a bean stitch. And if I make that into 3D, see how you, the 3D doesn't really give the bean option full justice yet. I bet they fix that in the future. But when you stitch it out, remember my mantra, there's two types of inverters, ones that sew a sample and ones that wish they did. So you sew a sample, you're gonna see how nice and dense this is. So I'm gonna double click my magnifying glass so it's all centered, select my tool. And now we can go and stitch this out and if we like it, we will pleat it up, put some ear loops on it, and we have ourselves a fancy face mask. Now, what type of stabilizer? How are we gonna stitch this out? I just did it very simply for the store. I put a poly mesh and just put the poly mesh only in the hoop, did my placement lines, made sure my fabric was larger than my placement line, and I tacked that down. I trimmed off the fabric on the left side, the right side, and the bottom, but I left a hem of about a half inch at the top, maybe three quarters of an inch, because I'm rolling that to the back, and I'm gonna sew in a pocket to put a nose piece or a wire in, so I just left the fabric on the top. Then I'm gonna stitch that out, and then I'm gonna trim the stabilizer way all the way around. Now, if you don't like the way poly mesh fits, feels on your face, you could use a cutaway. You could actually iron on something on the back of your face fabric, like a ultra dream weave, and then put a wash away stabilizer in your hoop and wash all that away and you just have the, the fabric and the stitching for your mask. So there's a lot of ways you can finish this mask. I pleated up two plates to make this seven in, seven and a half inches to about three to three and a half inches. And I put an ear loop of elastic of six and a half inches of elastic, six and a half to seven inches on each side is ear loop, and they fit really nice. So that is my FTCU class for this month. I hope that uh, you get some good ideas on it. I really hope that you get the, you really need to get the latest version. And thank you very much. This is Jeff at High Fashion.